Welcome everyone, this is the Stock Babies Podcast, the only gaming show for the average Joe. We bring gaming news and reviews without all the gaming language and extra fluff, just straight to the point for the average Joe to get. I'm your host, The Gutter Cat. If you like what you hear, give us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell to be up to date on the latest releases we're working on. Also, our social media presence is very low right now, so bear with us and support us as we grow and make this show fun and entertaining for you guys as possible. Now, anyway, on to the show. Today is the first video in my Reverb series. This is the show where I take a look back at things that pass by and give my reaction, my uh, my view of it, more or less, you know? Also, today I'm flying solo. My partner, the lo-fi beatnik, is honestly right now, he's doing his own thing right now, but, you know, he'll be back on the next show. Promise you that. This episode, we're going to be focusing on this last week's big event, which was the Game Awards. There was, this was a very fun show. There was plenty for everyone to see, even Xbox, which was a little low, actually, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, we're going to first start off with the big, amazing orchestra that they had. They went all out this year. They had a big orchestra playing lots of theme songs to a lot of the games that were going to be at the event. And, and it was crazy because if you're a big fan of metal, you, uh, you saw Sinister Gates right there playing the guitar at the beginning. Sensor Gates of Event Centerfold, that is. So, you know, that was, a, that was a treat for anybody who kind of pointed that one out. Um, the show was great. It had a lots of ups and downs, had fun moments, you know. And one big one, like, we're going to start off with, it was, there was a lot of dark and gritty there. You know, when there was a teaser for what seems to be Bloodborne 2. The game, the game from Front Software, you know, hard as balls, but, you know, it has its kind of dark dark atmospheric tone lots of werewolves and zombies and things like that it's freaking great i like i hope it is bloodborne 2 and i hope to see more of it uh another game in the same vein one called witchfire like a first person shooter seems to be pretty cool like medieval times kind of like an evil dead 2 kind of vibe to it uh, evil dead 3 my bad army of darkness um also we had gtfo silly name from the guys who did payday uh, payday 2 um, these, this game seems like a co-op team shooter. Um, you gotta take on hordes of zombie-like creatures, what it seems to be. Uh, uh, it's crazy. Mutants, I don't know. That's it's crazy. We also had um, Metro Exodus, also about mutants. You know, if you've ever played the Metro games, they're, they're very good games in that vein. You know, something like, you know, Russia, Midwinter. Uh, sort of like Stalker, if you've ever played the PC games. Um, it's crazy. It's kind of like a dystopian world creatures and mutants run amok and you know you got breathing masks and things like that it's a trip so that's a good game that's a good series i should say um we are also left with a big weird trailer somewhere in the show for uh hideo kojima the guy who makes metal gear games his his newest game coming out um death stranding stars norman reedus has some input from guillermo del toro who actually showed up at the show with hideo kojima to announce the show um also there was a um there was a time where uh, kojima came back with norman reedus to show us off the trailer which is stars norman reedus which is uh, which is from walking dead series of actual shows not games um it was mind trip pretty freaky there's not, there's not much to it you know it's like you know no real good information about it but you know, um, it's Kojima. It'll be a great game. Well, well I hope to see what we can see more soon enough. Um, also, this show, honestly, this show with Nintendo's though, uh, all the way. Um, they they had a lot of awards, a lot of things like that. Um, let, we're gonna start off with uh, the trailer for um, the new DLC for Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, which is the Champions Ballad, which seems to take you through. Um, how can I say, like the past lives of the champions, which if you play Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, some great amazing game, we'll get more on that in a little bit. But as for this DLC package, it seems you get to play some of their, their heroic deeds or stories. And, you know, you get lots of new weapons, armor, and also the most awesome thing I, I saw from this is a motorcycle. It looks like a horse, but sh Link on a badass motorcycle, that's freaking nuts. Although some fans won't agree with me that, you know, Breath of the Wild is more, you know, fantasy and not modern motorcycle. But hey, you know what? More power to them. Legend of Zelda wasn't the only thing that Nintendo had going for them. Um, they actually won several awards that night. Um, for Best Game Direction, 
best handheld game, best action adventure game, best family game, best strategy game. This was all Nintendo's night. Um, a lot of them actually belong to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is amazing. If you're a Switch owner, highly um, recommend that game. Oh man, if you don't already have it, but I think it even comes with Switches nowadays. Um, but not only that, but um, we got to look at Bayonetta 1 and 2 for Nintendo Switch. You know, if you had a Wii U, you probably played these games, or even back in the Wii. Um, or PS3 uh, and 360, sorry about that. Um, yeah, but a big surprise, however, is that um, Nintendo America president uh, Reggie Fils Aimé came on stage and actually announced another... Um, in the Bayonetta series, which is Bayonetta 3. Big crowd pop. That was amazing. I mean, like, you know, I'm not a fan of the games, but, you know, for anybody who's a big fan of it, it's just more great games for Nintendo Switch. Um, congratulations. That's great. Um, and, you know, not to leave not to leave out a big show that was mostly Nintendo and Sony PlayStation, Xbox had a little few hits of its own. You know, straight. Let's start off with, um, we got to see trailers for Sea of Thieves which is Xbox next game coming out maybe somewhere in 2018 I'm not sure if I, say I saw a date or not I wasn't really paying attention to that we also got to see a new map for the PC exclusive player unknown battleground which is also going to be coming to early access or whatever you want to call it on Xbox one so you know they'll probably end up getting that map as well it's the most popular first person shooter right now on Twitch with over a million concurrent subscribers or more or less that means a million people playing all at once that's nuts um also the biggest thing out of all this is that their uh, xbox exclusive game you know the only game that xbox has uh cuphead actually won several awards against many of the big comp competition you get won best art direction best indie game and best debut game now for for a game with only about 14 people working on it that's big Best Art Direction beat out games like Horizon Zero Dawn and Legend of Zelda, which is amazing by those standards. Um, also, in the vein of talking about things like Player Known Battleground, um, its direct competition, Fortnite, uh, with its Battle Royal mode, it has now announced a 50 vs. 50 um, um, player mode, which, you know, will probably tilt the scales in their favor more. Uh, you know, we'll wait to see that. You know, it's not as popular of a game, but it's getting there. Um, also, all night long, we were treated to lots of um, community trailers from for the game Warframe, which has been out for several years now, and which has evolved to one of the best player-driven third-person shooters of all time now, I guess you could say. Because it, it's very it's complex. You know, when I first tried to play it, it was just a first-person shooter. Now it's everything. You know, RPG, first-person shooter, sort of similar. It's something like that. And that looks great. You know, it makes me want to jump back into that series myself. Also, we have, we've had a little bit of uh, treats from Sony's um, company, Media Molecule, finally showing off Dreams, a game that w which was announced several years back. Um, finally making an appearance and it looks amazing. It seems like you can build anything. It's much like Media Molecule's previous game, um, Little Big Planet. This time it seems like everything is off the table. You can do anything and everything. Now, my biggest moments of the night. Um, not counting Game of the Year. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, first of all, we'll talk about Joseph Ferris. Um, director of a upcoming game called A Way Out which looks amazing uh, multiplayer story driven game oh and like i can't even imagine it's like couch co-op but not couch co-op it's it's insane it's it seems fun like a like a prison break style story um but that's not what the biggest thing mr ferris did there actually the biggest thing was him going completely off script Thinking, um, making um, Mr. Jeff Raleigh, the guy who created the Game Awards, thinking, seemed like he's sweating, going crazy. This guy went off the rails like crazy, telling people, telling people, hey, you know, it's fun to make fun of EA, whatever, about their Luke Cage situation, which is a, which is them overcharging for things. You know, it's not what it, it's, you know, it's a different story, different time. Um, but he went crazy, pretty much going like, oh, yay, but, you know, it's fun to say, hey, fuck EA, but you know what, he also defended him saying, hey, you know what, they gave me a chance, they're a good company, sometimes we all fuck up. 
and you know that's kind of the big thing here you know you could either be on ea side with this guy or not ea is a corporation company they like to take you know small games and make them kind of bigger than they should be but you know if they're doing things like giving this guy little chances then you know they how bad can they really be i'm not really too sure um also later on in the show before getting the year we had a big overwatch tribute they also won ongoing game this year as well overwatch is obviously one of the biggest games out there um starting to make their own overwatch league and the overwatch tribute was just an amazing amazing thing it was the orchestra playing the overwatch theme when cutscenes and all this stuff it, it was beautiful and of course finally if you didn't see it already um as presented by the game awards creator himself jeff Keeley. i said jeff for all year earlier that's skateboarder my bad um the game of uh, the game of the year award which went to it could have gone to any of these five people which were player unknown battlegrounds legend of zelda breath of the wild super mario odyssey persona 5 and Horizon Zero Dawn. All these games were very viable contenders. I'm not really sure about PUBG. That's kind of weird. Player on Battlefront, but you know, um, they were all viable contenders. But of course, Nintendo um, came out on top with Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Again, that's a beautiful game. It's amazing. Um, check it out if you could. Um, and you know, it was a great night on and off. If you guys have a chance, I you know highly recommend checking it out. There were some amazing things. Um, you know, let me recap everything else because, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, words and, you know, we really can't get up to everybody on that one. Uh, best game direction, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Best narrative, What Remains of Edith Finch. Good indie game, check that out. Uh, best art direction, Cuphead. Best musical score, Near Automata. Again, a AAA game. Again, amazing gameplay, amazing music. Best audio design, Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. F a small game from Ninja Theory, again. Somewhat like uh, Heavenly Blade, if you guys ever played that one, Heavenly Sword. Um, so check that one out, that's amazing. As well as best performance for Hellblade. Um, Miss Melina Jurgens, who, who played Sen Senua, that was her first role in a video game and she pulled it off amazingly. It also got games for Impact, which, you know, I, I don't know what really that, that category stands for, but, you know, sure, why not. Um, it also got, be um, sorry. Best ongoing game was Overwatch, which has been going on since last year, I believe, and it's still going strong. Best independent game went to Cuphead. Best mobile game went to Monument Valley 2. It's not really familiar with that one. Best handheld game, Metroid Samus Returns. That was a remake of Metroid 2 for a Game Boy for any of those guys who played that before. Best, v uh, best VR game, Resident Evil 7. Oh yeah, that was fucking amazing in VR. Uh, best action game, Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus from Bethesda. That's an amazing game as well. The great uh, one game in the vein of, uh, well, in the, in the vein of this whole franchise of Wolfenstein. Best action adventure game, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Best role playing game, Persona 5. Best fighting game, Injustice 2. Oh, that's a great game, NetherRealm Studios. Guys who made um, Mortal Kombat, so check that out. Best family game, Super Mario Odyssey. Best strategy game, Mario um, Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Freaking amazing game by Ubisoft and Nintendo. Best sports racing game, Forza Motorsport 7. Oh, there's another one for Xbox. Best multiplayer, player unknown battleground. Most anticipated game, Last of Us Part 2. Uh, you know, more on that as that comes later. Trending gamer, Mr. Guy Beam or Dr. Disrespect for anybody who wants to know. Uh, best esports game, Overwatch again. Best esports player, Lee Sang Hyuk. I, I'm sorry if I couldn't say that right. Um, faker. Um, that's his name. Not He's not a faker. Um, he's also good with SK Telecom and League of Legends. Um, best esports team, Cloud9. Um, esports is very short and small right now. So, you know, as that climbs up, we'll talk about that. Uh, and then the Student Game Award goes to Level Square, which was a from Swinburne University. Good job, you guys. And best debut indie game was Cuphead. Which is probably the same thing as best indie game. Uh, I don't know. Um, that was it for the Game Awards. I know I missed a couple things, but more or less those were the highlights, you know. This weekend also brought about PSX this weekend, which was full of games galore. If you're a PlayStation fan, here you go. You guys missed out. Well, you guys didn't actually miss out on the Game Awards. There was a lot of Sony in there, but and then PSX right now is where everything was, you know. Uh, started out with a big sizzle reel showing games off like Guacamelee 2, Days Gone, God of War, and lots of VR games. Most of this stuff was shown at E3 earlier this year, which 
you know, it's it's good to see that they're still working on this and, you know, sh keeping us up to date with all these games. Um, the biggest thing about VR this, uh, um, this show, though, was Last Guardian. Um, it seems to be about maybe 20 minutes of gameplay or so, worth of gameplay, you know, taking scenes or so from The Last Guardian. Seems pretty cool, you know, I mean, seeing that in VR, looking at that giant, um, Trico, giant monster of the game. Uh, also, another game was Firewall Zero Hour, which is a tactical 4v4 shooter. You know, um, VR isn't really a thing for shooters, but hey, maybe, you know, if you, they can get this stuff working, that'd be cool. And of course, for all you racing fans out there, you get Wipeout Omega Collection. Um, Wipeout Collection's also, you know, it's been an old collection, but, you know, it's still a great series of games. I mean, come on. Seeing that in first person VR, all you need is a fan in front of you and you'll feel that speed. <laughs> Um, okay, after that, you got Herman Holst of Guerrilla Games. Um, they came by, talked about the adventures of what they did having, um, creating um, Horizon Zero Dawn and its expansion. Uh, which, you know, a great little tidbit for anybody who's a big Sony fan. Again, look this stuff up on YouTube, you'll get it. You'll, you'll probably enjoy it. Um, also, Corey Barlog of God of War, talking about how he finished the playtest um, portion of it now. The game is almost done. And, you know, it's shaping up to be amazing 30, 25 to 35 hour adventure. If you guys love God of War, I mean, this just looks way more amazing than, you know, previous games. Um, he also uh, said, what uh, all of us were kind of thinking, hopefully, that there was um, less of the kid talking. If you've seen the previous trailers, the kid talks a lot. He, you know, he put our fears to rest and said that the kid won't even talk as much as even in those trailers. So, you know, he was hoping to that, you know, I don't like story driven things like that. Um, we also got a media molecule coming back on stage, you know, um, more on their game Dreams, which, uh, was sh uh, shown a little bit at the Game Awards, but this time going into depth with this, I'm uh, talking about the, uh, various story modes going through different dreams of the other people of the game and showing off how you could practically make anything. It, you literally, it is literally a dream game simulator, which is amazing. Like, I mean, I can't even, you know, fathom what can be done. The, the community was so good with um, Little Big Planet. I mean, like, you know, imagine if you give them the reins to anything. Um, we also got some fo um, gameplay from the creators of Detroit Become Human, which is uh, that game. I mean, like, I'm waiting for that one. That one looks so amazing. Apparently, you could have multiple different endings, even in the demo, which had, like, multiple different endings, apparently. And which seems like just such a beautiful story-driven game. Quit those guys, um... Ooh, I forget their name, but, you know, I apologize for you guys who created that game. But, uh, Quantic Dream, there you go. Um, Quantic Dream, um, they make a beautiful game engine. The people almost look realistic. It's freaking crazy. I mean, it's game people, but, you know, that's real good. We got some announcements for fighting game fans out there. Uh, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, which puts various franchises from Atlas's... Um, fighting game series Blaze Blue, Persona 4 Arena, Under Night Inverse, and introducing RWBY, I believe, which is a web show which has uh, various anime style and girls and guys fighting it out. Same is fun. Um, also, the big one, I forgot to mention this when I was talking about the Game Awards, the announcement of Soul Calibur 6. Oh man, I've been waiting years for this one. Uh, and looks beautiful and amazing characters look like they're back in their younger forms as opposed to their older forms on Soul Calibur 5 so you know we'll see what that looks like um, at the Game Awards um, the creators of Tekken and the uh, director of um, Soul Calibur came out to announce this game so you know if you're looking forward for Soul Calibur 6 wondering where it's at there it is right there um, we got a couple other games you know let's just round this out you know we got Donut Country which looks like a simple little game where your little holes sucking up things on the floor like a Pratt hole or something, it's pretty funny. Um, Monster Hunter World, that's a big one coming out actually, made the beginning of the year. Which, uh, you know, if you've ever played the Monster Hunter series, if not, you're a little dude, you're hunting giant monsters. This time, you even have giant weapons like a ballista, you know, a giant spear throwing machine to hunt down these big motherfuckers. They also showed off a little bit of like a little QB Mega Man that you can make your little cat partners. Yeah, it's like cat partners. You can make them wear, which is pretty funny. Um, and then the end of this showed off um, Andrew House, big guy from PlayStation, who's been there many, 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 many years. He's announcing his retirement, so you know, 
it's sad to see somebody like that go who was so integral in making PlayStation amazing, but you know, more power to him. Hopefully he retires and has a good life. Um, which segued into, again, Death Stranding, um, Mr. Kojima's game, which is uh, showing off some of the stuff that they showed off at the Game Awards. And, you know, talking about how crazy this game is and how fun it's going to be. It's Mr. Hideo Kojima. He's going to... It's going to be an amazing game. Doesn't matter what weirdness goes on there. Uh, and then the show ended with a big treat teaser trailer to Medieval Remake, which is... A, or you know, ground up HD creation, whatever. Uh, uh, if you haven't seen... No, if you don't know, the Medieval series has been dormant since the PSP way back when. So, you know... To see this game remade or redone, um, I hope it, it comes out good, so we could um, so we could have some more fun with that. I used to love that series, so you know, all creepy and stuff. That's that's my game. I love that. Um, so you know, that was tons and tons of games announced this the past week. Um, so many games. 2018 seems to be a really amazing year to be a gamer, and you know, I hope this continues. You know, hope we get more for Nintendo Switch for it. For PlayStation, even Xbox. I hope they kind of somehow come back from this love they had. Um, hope you guys' noggins are full. Hope you guys had a blast listening to me ramble. On that note, I, I like to thank the Chill Hop um, YouTube channel because their playlists are amazing. Um, go out, check them out, subscribe to their channels. Um, it's just a chill vibe. Um, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at DJ Guttercat. And for, for some more heads up on when the new episodes of the show are going to come up. What am I doing sometimes? I'm not really too sure. I, I, I try to keep my best with it. And, you know, we're just starting out. So I hope you guys can, you know, stick along, like what you see, and help grow with us. You know, we would love to have uh, more fans of us from the beginning. And, you know, hopefully we can do this, uh, make you guys make an entertaining show. And hope you guys are tickled by the little goofy things we do. I know I'm a little bit boring myself, but you know, I need somebody to bounce off. But what can I say? I am what I am. I'm the gutter cat. That was Stock Baby's Reverb, and I'm signing out. I'll catch you guys later.